Hi, we've been living on Cariwa now for nearly two and a half years. And while we sit here in Panama, getting ready for the next phase of our adventures, we thought it was high time that we did a tour of our boat, just to refresh everyone's memories about the accommodation spaces, the engine room spaces, uh, the navigation spaces, and just a general overall feel of what's it's like on board this Nordarvon 62, built in 1997, but greatly refreshed. Let's start in the aft salon space. Looking down the port side, you see the TV on a travelator, and then the galley in the uh, port forward corner, swinging around to the seating and dining area. And as you come, you start to face off. There's the stack and the doors out to the uh, cockpit of the boat. And um, the Admiral Leslie is going to uh, chat about what we have around us. So in the galley, all of the upper cabinets have a lot of storage space. So uh, in here we've got bowls, um, cereal bowls, dessert bowls, and some platters. Um, obviously they're all open from inside the galley. Here's our, our plates and dishes. Uh, this one here is all the coffee mugs and tea cups, etc. And in here we have all our drop proof glasses. And in over here we have all the delicate glasses and they're all hanging from wooden um, like it's a wooden hanging rack for all the wine glasses and below each glass has a hole cut out and when we're underway, these glasses clash together quite violently and we've never had a breakage yet. So I think the wood absorbs a lot of the shock. Inside the galley, we have a lot of room and I say a lot because we had a catamaran before and there was very limited space. So I have a whole uh, spice rack here. I keep my oils, coconut oil, olive oil, etc. up here. Um, hand mixes etc then I've got two roll up doors here like garage doors so in these like garage roll up type doors we have all our sauces hot sauce uh, Worcester sauce um, salt and pepper and above here uh, quite a nice storage for tea coffee cereal so these cabinets above are very very deep so in this one I've got about 70 or 80 tins of food and all four of them are the same then we have refrigerator and another refrigerator and freezer with ice maker which is very useful we use it all the time and then just another freezer so we have two freezers and two fridges and so far it's been adequate, it's been enough. We obviously also have a full-size dishwasher, um, full-size electric oven and a four burner in, uh, gas hob with a microwave. So now I'm sitting in the dining area I suppose of the main salon, very nice comfortable couches. Um, in fact, we sit here most of the time because the TV is on the opposite side. Behind each couch back here, there's a cabinet where we store snacks and um, some like soda tins, etc. And obviously underneath all the couches, there's storage for dry food. So I have baskets, I have everything in baskets so that it doesn't slide and roll around too much. And also underneath this couch, there's an air conditioning unit. And um, then we also have a leaf that fits in uh, for the table here. So we could easily sit, I don't know, six or eight people. We just leave the leaf out because it's more comfortable to move in and out without it. Okay, and we had new, uh, new curtains made when we were in Guatemala. So... 
mm. gives it a nice nautical theme whereas before we had kind of formal I don't know pseudo gold brocade type very old fashioned this stuffy is much nicer yeah so I'm just going to open up and show you two of the storage spaces underneath and behind this couch so behind we have a number of cabinet doors where we can store a lot of stuff and then underneath we have a huge space here and I have filled it with baskets and basically our dry goods our dry grocery goods go in here okay and in here last but not least under the galley sink we have this cabinet which we use for the important stuff well the captain thinks it's the important stuff um, I use these bags because it stops the bottles rolling around and crashing together when we're underway from the salon as we move forwards down three steps on the port side we uh, come to the master cabin and on the starboard side you see the electrical panel so this is the master cabin um, we have a lot of storage so this is a hanging cupboard shelf space next to the bed three drawers next to the bed another two drawers to the side here this is our charging station so everything gets charged over here more shelf space above and then uh, obviously also there's also drawers underneath the bed and then in the head we have a shower with a shower curtain not our favorite thing but it is what it is so we have a little cabinet above the shower then there's another cabinet um, in the shower wall and nice space under here four drawers and an adequate a big medicine cabinet and also a little cabinet up here so there's a lot of storage um, on the in the head so from the other side we have another it's almost a double hanging wardrobe uh, four more drawers there's another set of small drawers four shelves here three drawers next to the bed and shelf space next to the bed so we have plenty of storage space in the master okay. i'll cover the electrical panel in a separate video when i talk about the technology on board so as we walk forwards from uh, the master on the right hand side we have a a um, toilet a head that also supports the uh, double bunk but just before we get there we have the dryer which is um, very useful and uh, further forwards down on the the bottom we have the washing machine which also is a full-size washer also very good and storage facility for all the washing stuff and as we move further forwards to the three forward cabins with the three separate heads so this is the port side cabin it's kind of what we use as our guest cabin so whoever visits um, gets to sleep here again there's plenty of storage space there's hanging um, space behind the door drawers under the bunk uh, some little drawers down the side four shelves here and two shelves there we also bought this Dometic fridge freezer somebody uh, in the marina was selling it so we thought we'd buy it and um, see if we can fill it so this uh, berth <laughs> is just used as storage it's a double bunk again it's got a hanging wardrobe behind the door and two single bunks and obviously it's just full of stuff so we just use it as storage and finally, right up in the bow, we have what's referred to as a crew cabin, which has its own head and it has a roll out cot. And as you can see, it's used as storage for all the dive gear and uh, fold up chairs and yoga mats and spare uh, 
uh, water pump, etc. But there is room for a nice bunk underneath. Yeah, the, the, the bunk in here is quite comfortable. The screw cabin has a fair sized uh, hanging wardrobe which we use as storage. It has in it dive gear, vacuum cleaner, fold up chairs, bread maker, uh, slow cooker. <laughs> and another important feature is the, the crew cabin has a watertight door. This forward crew cabin, the foremost uh, space in the boat is the head and shower for the crew cabin. In keeping with this boat, this boat has four cabins and four heads. There's also a door here which leads into the uh, chain locker. Once I open up the door, you can see into the chain locker. 400 feet of chain, nicely stacked, lots of room, and a backup fortress over on the uh, port side there as well. If we come up the uh, stairs up into the pilot's house, You can see that uh, they have a very good all-round view from the pilot house, the traditional pilot house. And um, full set of equipment, which I'll do in more detail in a separate technical video. Um, but we have all the equipment. She's been uh, modernized. Uh, we also have the uh, electrical panel and also the alarms. Here you see the main engine panel. These are the two AP70s uh, autopilots. And then we have three touch screens, which is hard to see at the moment. But as I said, I'll do them in more detail later with a technical video. And then we have the stabilizer controls and the backup wing engine controls. This is the um, controls for the main engine and then we have the follow-up joystick, the magnetic compass, the bow thruster which also operates as a um, valve for the forward hydraulic systems, the wing engine controls, um, the ability to heave the anchor from the uh, pilot house and the anchor wash and then the windscreen washers. The pilot house has a pretty substantial table and uh, seating arrangement and then on the back is a bunk which the Admiral uses to sleep on when we're underway. Generally when the Admiral's on watch I might lie here or lie down in the salon. Again great view from uh, inside the boat from the pilot house area. Portuguese wing on both sides we have controls to allow us to maneuver the vessel when we're coming alongside and being able to look over the side. See we have the uh, bow thruster controls, the joystick and the main engine mapless controls. And we have one on both sides, one on each side of the uh, Portuguese bridge. Come round. Here we have the gas bottles as we move forwards to the middle. You can see that um, there's an e perb and also a right in light, which will come on if the boat goes in the water or if you turn the light around the other side, out of the way. Coming around this way, we have the dinghy under its cover, the davit under cover and the vast foredeck of the boat, which really distinguishes the boat from most of the others and really makes her a good sea-keeping vessel and improves the ride as she goes through the waves. Right above the chain locker is the Maxwell 3500 windlass system with the 15mm um, <clears throat> chain and the 110 kg Rockner anchor which we are very very satisfied with and we sleep well at night with this anchor. 
Tarawa has a great off deck area where we sit under the uh, awning that we've had to put up. At the moment, the cushions are up and drying. On top of the pilot house is a very critical area where we have our radars, our satellite compass, our weather station, and of course all of the antennas related to our communications where we have an Iridium Certus, an Iridium Go, a um, VSAT 45 centimeter, and also a um, Starlink on the very top. We will do an extensive video on the communications which are critical to us and also where we will discuss the pros and cons of all of the systems. Those antennas up on the Monkey Island lead down to these below decks units. On the bottom there you can see the iDirect modem for the VSAT and then the um, Iridium Certus as well as the 12 terabyte storage device that we use. At the back of uh, Karawa is a swim platform with a swim ladder. Unlike uh, some of the newer 62s which have a bustle. The bustle is a storage area but it's not that dry. The bustle does lift the stern but it also makes the steering in a following sea more difficult. 62 has a cruiser stern um, so it's not squared off like the newer boats but again this makes it better in a seaway. As you board Karawa and come down the starboard side going aft you come to the cockpit area. Under the blue cover is the electric grill and plenty of space for the teak deck and a swim and not a, the swim platform off to the, the aft end and then the fishing table over in the corner. So in the back of the 62 is our lazarette which is basically a storage facility but it's also where the, uh, the steering is and also our dive compressor which is a Bauer Oceanus. Below is the lazarette as we had filmed and then we have the windows and the double doors going into the uh, salon. We also have a hydraulic uh, capstan here for hauling lines if necessary on the aft end. Next we're going to go down into the engine room. Um, there's nothing running in there at the moment, which has enabled us to uh, film it with some silence. Um, you can't stand up in a Nordhaven 62 engine room, but as most of the work is done sitting down, I don't find that to ever be a hazard, and I'm not a small person. Um, I much prefer to have the right designed hull rather than have stand-up engine room space. So I'm comfortable with it. As you take the four steps down into Kariwa's engine room, you will notice how clean and organized the engine room is. This engine room has undergone a complete overhaul with a previous owner and I have maintained it to the same level. On the port starboard side here on the left you see the Raycors, then you see the main engine swinging round, you see a fan, and in the far stern there you see the backup wing engine. What we're looking here at here is the backup wing engine and its transmission, which is in the aft end of the uh, engine room. And you can see that there's a little box covering the drive, as it's a uh, V drive that goes back to its own propeller. And there is its own dry stack uh, insulated uh, exhaust. Here is the uh, fuel manifold for the uh, five fuel tanks for both the uh, suction and return. 
and also the ray cores, the main engine having two ray cores, then each of the uh, generator and wing having one ray core, and then in addition, we have a large two micron ray core, which is used to polish the fuel when we move the fuel between the tanks. The boat also has a, a set of uh, main engine gauges here, which were added when the major overhaul was done of the engine and of the boat in general. This is the main engine, which is a MAN, M-A-N, German engine, extremely reliable and uh, runs very fuel efficiently. The port, over on the port side of the engine room is a toolbox, a vice and working station, 16 kW Northern Lights generator, and then moving aft is the water maker hidden behind the uh, floor panel which I've got up because I've been doing some work but there is the uh, the water maker the hydraulic reservoir tank and then in the corner is a hydraulic generator which will take its drive off the main engine when we're underway and yes, it works very well. Looking forwards on the port side, you can see the stabilizer reservoir and the stabilizer coolant reservoir for the uh, two stabilizers on the boat. Here is one of the, the fans for the main engine room because it gets quite hot in here. Over on the starboard side of the engine room is the two variable speed chillers for the air conditioning and that's the control panel and off to the right hand side of the view of the picture are the two pumps for the cooling water um, and to move the water the chiller water around the um, the boat when the air conditioning is on the two red pumps in the shot here are the hydraulic cooling pumps one is for the stabilizer and one is for the general hydraulics, the cooling pumps for the um, hydraulics when they're on. I'll do a much more in-depth discussion of the uh, engine room in a separate video. The last part of the tour of Karawa deals with what's under the floorboards. In this case, this is the manifolds for the fresh water maker and the manifold for the fresh water system, which is under the uh, floorboards in the alleyway between the cabins. Here you can see the different valves and where they uh, work to. And then we work up here and we can see the top of a fresh water tank with both the filler and discharge lines for the tank. And you can see the position of where it is. The next two hatch covers deals with uh, the black water tank, the battery charger, the manual pump for the um, black water tank and a number of through hulls, all of which have to be exercised regularly to, main, to ensure that you can move them when you need to. Down there is the battery charger and then there's two pumps. The one on the left side there is the shower pump and the one just at the top of the picture is the black water discharge pump when you're at sea. So there's the Admiral standing in the crew cabin in the, in the bow. And she's just opened up the last space below the floorboards. And uh, you're looking all the way down into the forward bow. You can see the uh, emergency pump, the uh, uh, bow thruster, hydraulics and pump, and then you've got all these uh, eight 8D batteries, as well as here is the Mach 5 water pump and the main water filters for the boat, for the water system and numerous overboards with check valves that we have to swing every month 
to make sure that we've exercised them and that they stay loose. So that concludes the uh, tour of Kariwa from bow to stern in both the mechanical spaces as well as the living spaces and I hope it gives you some idea of both the environment in which we live as well as the technology that we work with to ensure that we have a comfortable living on board. While Kariwa's hull is now 26 years old, almost all of her systems are less than four years old with brand new hoses, brand new wiring, uh, brand new systems, brand new electronics. And so we feel like we have a fairly new boat inside. And the hull was extremely well built. So we have no fears about taking Karawa to sea. See you next time.